Hi, I'm Jessica with the Santa Paula Art Museum, and welcome to Art Club. Today's project is called A Bug's Life, and we're going to be making a bunch of bugs. They're all going to be different. They can all be different colors and shapes, and we're going to give them personality. So what you'll be learning today is how to use watercolor and use a technique called wet on wet. So that's when the paint is still wet and you get to add another type of color to the paint and you'll see it mix. You'll also learn about collaboration. Do you know what collaboration is? I'm gonna go ahead and say the word collaboration and I want you to say it afterwards, okay? So collaboration, one, two, three. Good. So, what I think collaboration might mean is working together and sharing ideas to make something new. And by working together, you're not working alone. Two brains are better than one. So let's get started. The materials you'll use today is a simple plain piece of paper. This is a smaller size paper and this will be for drawing. And you'll use a larger size paper that's also a little bit thicker so that it's better for using for watercolors. You'll also need a pen or a pencil, but if you don't have a pen, a pencil's just fine. Also, if you don't have watercolors on hand, you can always use food coloring. You'll also need some markers if you want to create some details at the end, but you don't have to use them. So let's get started. You're gonna start off with your paintbrush and you're gonna make sure that there's enough water on your brush. And now I'm going to make my first shape. So just put water down. We're going to make four shapes. And we're just using water right now. So here's my first shape. My second shape. Maybe I could make this a triangle, since I already have a circle. We want our bugs to be very different. Now I'm going to make our third shape. Make sure to load up that paper with water. Perfect! So how about our last and fourth shape? Like I said, we're gonna have, make sure that that's wet. Perfect, every shape has water. I just used water, like I said. Now we can move on to adding color. Does everybody have four shapes? We're gonna add the color to our first shape. What's your favorite color? I'm gonna go with yellow, but you're just gonna add just a little bit of color. So barely gonna touch my palette very lightly, pat, 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 and I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the water. Looks like I picked up very little color. Let's grab some more. So just a little bit, and I'm going to swirl it in there so that I can get my yellow onto my shape. Perfect. Can you tell that that's the yellow? Now let's do our second shape. So here's my second shape. Mm, maybe we'll go with green this time. But remember to keep in, keep in mind that we're only using very little color. So because green is very strong, you're just going to dab it. And go slowly. There you go. See, I'm just making little dot shapes, barely touching it. Watch how it pulls over. Isn't that cool? Add a little extra water to push it around and watch, watch it flow. And you can pull it a little too. This is what happens when you put wet watercolor on the wet page. So that's our technique wet on wet. Now we're gonna move on to our third shape. I'm gonna use red. Just a little bit of red. And this one, I'm going to go across, just like that. So see how it's just on the tip? I'm gonna start off, go across, bring my color across, 
and maybe add some more water so that those colors play around on the puddle. Look at that. Super. Gonna add a little more red so that you can really tell that there's red in there. But notice how my brush is not completely covered yet. That's for the next step. This way I get to move the color around. This is the fun part about watercolors. They do move around on their own. Great. How about our last shape? I'm gonna use some purple. This one I'm going to try, try, try experimenting. I'm going to lay my brush flat, and maybe even turn it a little. Let's see what happens with the wet on wet. Not so much. Maybe it might need more water, so I'm gonna go ahead and add more water. Uh, that seems like it fixed it. So just even adding water on top of the color might move the color around. Look at that, perfect. Next step, we're going to, since these four shapes are still wet, we're gonna go ahead and go in with a darker color and see how they mix and experiment with the colors that are wet on wet. So with the first shape, I'm gonna go ahead and use a dark blue. Let's go ahead and get my palette in here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the blue and see how my brush is completely covered. We're gonna go ahead and just drop it in. See what it does. Look at that. It makes the colors pop. How about our second shape? I'm gonna go ahead and go with red. See how my brush is loaded. I see that there's a little puddle here. Let's see if we can hold on to the color and see what happens. Whoa. It's like it's moving on its own, it's alive. I like how that red does that. Just gonna keep adding. And then how about this red? Make sure that your brush is completely clean. Looks like there's some red on here. I'm gonna clean that up really good. Perfect, okay. Let's do some blue on my red. And I like how I already did those lines. Remember how I went straight? I'm gonna do it again. See if the colors mix. Wet on wet. Drag that a little. There we go. What happens when you mix blue and red? Are you gonna get a new color? Maybe it's purple. Let's add a little bit more red to that and see if we can get purple. Ooh, we are. Super, so now we're mixing. Just move your brush around until you get the color that you want. So see how there's still a little there? I can mix it, mix, mix, mix. Looks like it's turning purple. Perfect, look at that. And I'm very lightly tapping. Oh, little splashes, but that might be cool. We can incorporate that into the design too. Our last shape is looking like it might need a little extra water, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some water there. Okay, okay, now let's do our last shape. Now let's do our last shape. This one I might just follow as if I'm like drawing in it. Ooh, and look at that orange and purple mix. That's a cool design and texture we didn't get with the others. But feel free to experiment with your colors. I really like how my color is mixed, and I really enjoyed using the wet on wet technique. So I had wet color first, and then dropped in colors, and I also just had wet paper, and then added my color in, and I got cool forms. So even though the color is now on the page, we're going to do the next step, and the next step is going to be drawing on the paper. But because it's still wet, 
we can help it dry. I have some paper here, a little paper towel, and I'm just going to roll it up and start dabbing on the paper to help remove the extra water. And that even gives us some texture to the shape, so we get a new shape. Look at that. Okay, so the next step is collaboration. Can we say the word one more time? Collaboration. So that, remember that it means that we're gonna share our ideas and work together. Time to trade your papers, so find someone in class to share with. It doesn't matter if they're done or not. We're just going to have fun making bugs by using the shapes that they make. You can trade with someone and make sure to say thank you. Next, you're going to get your supplies. So you'll be needing your small piece of paper and your pencil. Pause this video and when you're ready, hit play so that we can get started on drawing your bugs. Next, we're gonna practice making bug parts. What parts does a bug have? They have legs, heads and eyes, wings, and antenna. I'm gonna be using a marker, but you'll be using a pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some samples for you so that you can draw some legs, the heads and eyes, wings, and antenna. So for legs, you might wanna do some short legs for your bugs. And how many legs does a bug have? They have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can do short or you could do long. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or you could do little circle, little nubs for your, for your bugs. So those are three, four, five, six. Perfect. Awesome. How about head and eyes? So your bug will most likely have one head, but they can have multiple eyes. So I'm going to make little circles inside my bigger circle to show that he or she has multiple eyes. How about a head, just half, half a circle, and you're just going to keep their eyes white, color their little hard shell. Some bugs have a little, little darker head, like ladybugs, or they might have a little white shell and have dark eyes. Perfect. And wings. You can make a C shape for the wing with a line across and lines up and down to show that it has a wing. How about the letter B? for wings, and then you'll just have one line going across to have the wings. So these are, these could be small wings or big wings. Antenna, you can have two little antennas, so they can have short antenna or long antennas, or maybe some wavy curvy antenna. I like to round off by having little little ends of my antenna. Great. Well, let's pause the video. You go ahead and get your, your set done, and then when you're ready to move on to the next step, you can go ahead and push play. Now we're gonna add these details, like our legs, head and eyes, wings and antenna, and add it over to the body of watercolors that we did for our bugs. So now think about what you want to put on each bug. I'm gonna go ahead and start off by doing the head and the eyes and choosing where to place it on this bug. And then I'm going to choose what kind of legs and where are they gonna go on the bug. Also the wings and the antenna. Well, let's get started on that one. 
Looks like I might have a spot right here for a little head. So I'm going to start off with that half circle shape one more time and do one eye, two eyes. And I'm going to color it in. And where do the antennae go? Do they go, do the antennae go in the back or on the side? No, right, they go on the head. So I'm going to choose some of the antenna to put on my bug. I feel like the short ones would look best on this bug. So let's go ahead and add those. So one line, two line, with little circles at the end for the antenna. And how many legs did we say that the bugs have? They have six. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose maybe some long legs. So here's one, two, three. Maybe little circles on the bottom. Give them little feet. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. And it looks like maybe we can give them some wings right here on either side. So let's try that B shape that I did. So here's one B. I mean one half and half. And then I'm just gonna put a line across to show that the wings have little separate halves. And there we go. There's our first bug. Easy, right? Now you can choose different shapes and different sizes of, the, of all the details we gave to our bugs so that you can have unique shapes. Make sure to put head, a, eyes, antenna, wings, and legs. I'm gonna go ahead and continue making the rest of my bugs and then you can watch. Once you're done watching me, go through and make all my designs. Maybe you can pause this video, go ahead and create your designs on, on the collaboration, and we'll move on to the next step. And you'll push play afterwards. So go ahead and pause the video after and push play. Cool, now that I've finished my bugs, I wanna talk a little bit about what I did to create their unique appearances. So for first off on my first bug, I did choose to create a little head right here where it had a little opening and I gave it some long legs because it fit perfectly on each side. And we also created some simple wings, right? Making that B shape that I talked about. So I was very conscious about what I did here, along with this one right here. So now that I used these features on my bug, I wanted to make this bug a little more different. So I did long wavy antenna, unlike the short antenna. And I also gave him two similar little wings. I also gave him very long legs to give him his own personality. Here's the other bug that I really like too, how, the way he came out. I thought, I already did small head, so why not give it a bigger head? So here's the big head, and remember how we talked about the difference between the black and uh, white eyes? I went, at, went ahead and did that, because I already chose this decision. And I gave him long wings, but also little buttons at the end. And to make it funny, even though he's a bigger bug, I gave him very short legs. And you can count them off. There's one, two, three, four, five, six little legs. Over here, I did talk about how their heads could have more than one eye, so I went ahead and gave my bug multiple eyes and gave them that B-shaped wings all over again with short little legs on either side, just like this bug. So make sure that your bugs are a little different from each other, and I'm sure they're gonna be different from your neighbor's bugs, but you guys can share and observe them as well and take ideas from it. Well, my project's all fun and done. Thanks for joining me today. I had a lot of fun making bugs with you. If you want to have more fun and you want to keep adding to your bugs, why not give them a name? Or also make a story with your bugs. Maybe if you have extra time, use a pencil or markers to add some leaves for your bugs to munch on. Thanks again for making art with me, and see you next time for Art Club.